Hi! Welcome to the Great Stamp Adventure. Today we are going to continue to um, review the monarchs who ruled in the time of the postage stamp and we are going to view the depictions on British and New Zealand stamps. This is the second part of a three-part series. In the first part I said that there will only be two episodes, but um, the second became so long that I had to break it in three parts. In the first part, the first three monarchs were introduced. Um, I will put the link to the first part in the description below. Now we are going to review King Edward VIII and his brother King George VI. You must enjoy, <laughs> but don't forget to learn something. We begin with King Edward the Eighth. He is arguably best known as the king who abdicated to marry a divorced American. When King George V passed away in January 1936, his eldest son, Edward, became king. Edward was 41 years old. This is what he looked like. He ruled for a very brief period of only about 11 months, after which he suddenly abdicated. He had a complicated personality and was prone to moodiness and depression that were a feature of his life. He served in World War I and was the first member of British royalty to become a pilot. He went to Magdalen College, Oxford, but left after eight terms without a degree. Edward abdicated because he wanted to marry the American Wallace Simpson, who was granted a divorce from her husband in October of 1956 in preparation to marry the king. This was against the advice of many of Edward's advisors, who didn't believe as head of the Church of England he should marry a divorcee. Additionally, the Prime Ministers of the United Kingdom and the Dominions were against the marriage. In December of the same year, Edward started to rule, he abdicated to marry her. After abdication, Edward gave a famous radio address to the British public and the Empire, explaining his actions and that he is going to live in Europe. But you must believe me when I tell you that I have found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility and to discharge my duties as King as I would wish to do, without the help and support of the woman I love. Edward lived out his remaining life mostly abroad in France as the Duke of Windsor. He was the only British sovereign to voluntarily resign the crown. Due to the very short reign of King Edward VIII, only this one set of four definitive stamps were issued by Great Britain shortly after he became king. It was the only definitive set with his portrait issued in the world, but the stamps were overprinted for the Morocco agencies and Tangier. Relatively large numbers of the stamps were produced and was additionally saved by the public, and I read that their collector value is very low. 
I quickly checked the approximate retail prices for the complete set on Heapstamp and eBay when I made this video. On eBay, I found two complete sets, one mint and the other used, in fine condition. Each set available for one US dollar and 69 cents. That is quite affordable. <laughs> Additionally, a few other stamps with his image were is issued after his reign. This stamp was issued in 2012 as part of a commemorative series of kings and queens. In New Zealand, no definitive stamps with King Edward VIII were issued. He was, however, depicted on one stamp of a set issued in 1990 for commemorating the 150th anniversary of the Penny Black. The next king was King George VI. He was the younger brother of King Edward VIII. George became king unexpectedly, following the abdication of his brother in December 1936. He was on the throne for about 16 years until his death in 1952. He passed away at the relatively young age of 56 after failing to recover from lung surgery. He was rather reserved and shy and deeply religious and he was reluctant to become king. He suffered a severe nervous stutter probably due to his very strict upbringing. When he became an adult, Talking in public was a king to torture for him. However, he was a diligent and dedicated man and he worked hard to adapt to the role of king. King George's wife, Queen Elizabeth, later called the Queen Mother after his death, was of central importance to him and his reign. She was warm, charismatic and shrewd, and she understood the importance of crafting an image of family and security for the monarchy. It was Elizabeth who sought help for George's stutter. She essentially helped to change her husband from a stuttering, insecure second son into a loved and respected monarch. Their first child, Princess Elizabeth, who was to become queen, was born in April 1926. Princess Margaret was born four years later. The king's father, King George V, had to deal with World War I. King George VI had to deal with World War II during his reign. World War II raged from 1939 to 1945. During World War II, the king risked his life visiting war zones and recently bombed cities to encourage morale. He also created the George Cross for civilian gallantry, awarding it to the people of Malta for heroism under air attack. The king's sense of solidarity was further shown when he didn't retreat during the war. The king and queen were urged to leave London for their own safety, but they refused, even after Buckingham Palace was bombed. He became a king at a point when pub public faith in the monarchy was at a low after the abdication of his brother. During his reign, his people endured the war and imperial power was eroded. However, as a dutiful family man and by showing personal courage, he succeeded in restoring the popularity of the monarchy. Three main sets of standard definitive stamps were issued in Great Britain during the reign of King George VI. 
Here are two stamps from the first set of low value definitives. The first issues were in 1947, the year after King George became king. Later, during 1941 and 42, six of the low value stamps were issued in pale colors as a wartime economy measure. And then in 1951, some of the low values were issued in different colors to follow the regulations of the Universal Postal Union. There were two issues of high values. First, the arms set of 1959. Here are two of the stamps from the set. And later, there was the festival set of 1951. These stamps are really quite beautiful. There were seven commemorative issues during the reign of King George VI. The coronation stamp was the first. It was issued three days after the first three definitives were issued in 1957. Here are two of the other commemorative issues. The Victory Peace set of 1946 and the commemoration of the Royal Silver Wedding. Both issues are also very attractive stamps in my opinion. According to the website All About Stamps, I will give the link below in the description the British stamps of King George VI are very popular with collectors and it is relatively easy to form a good collection. Here are two definitive stamps of King George VI issued in New Zealand. One stamp of the lower value set and one stamp of the higher value set. The first set of low value definitives were issued in 1938. Eventually 13 low value and 4 high value definitive stamps in various colors were issued. The stamp printers developed the stamp design from a photograph of the King by Dorothy Wilding portraits. 14 of the first definitive series were overprinted with the word official for official use. The first stamps issued in New Zealand bearing the portrait of King George VI were three 1957 coronation commemorative stamps. More commemoratives followed. I show two of the sets. This is one stamp of the 1940 centennial issue of 13 stamps. It was intended not only to depict historically the five sovereigns who had reigned during New Zealand's first hundred years, but also to symbolize the unswerving loyalty of New Zealanders individually and collectively to the British throne. In 1946, a set of 11 stamps were issued as the peace issue. Here are two of them. Like the possible confusion of King Edward VII with his son George V, we investigated in part one of this series, the two brothers, Edward VIII and George VI, are also quite similar in, in appearance. In this case, it is not such a practical problem because so very few stamps were issued for King Edward VIII and these stamps are quite dis distinctive. That brings us to the end of this second part of a series of three about the British monarchs and their stamps. Be well and joyous until we meet again.